Hello everybody. Today I'll be talking about why and mainly how each and every company can put health and their vision and mission, their strategy, their marketing and even their communications. It's a monologue for consumer brands and companies, for pharmaceutical companies as well as healthcare institutions. Enjoy. Welcome to the Healthusiasm Monologue by Christophe Jouquet, the spoken column about making customers healthy and happy. We often say that people are more than ever occupied with their health today. And of course, if you say more than ever, you need to look back and see where we're coming from. And then I often show this graph. And in this graph, you can see how people increasingly over time have taken actions to impact their own health. And there's some, you know, major things that's happened. You know, medical breakthroughs, Dr. Google came along. Now we're in the midst of an AI revolution. But if I show this to companies, most of them will say, well, look, we're not going to make a mobile app or we're not going to put a website out on, on health specifically. What, what does it have to do with my business? And that's true. I mean, it's hard to convince any company that they should be focusing on health if you don't understand the three big evolutions behind it. And I'll briefly show you and explain to you what these three evolutions are. First of all, we're talking about a technical evolutions. And technology has allowed people, has allowed humans to become who or what they want to become. Because technology now is cheap. I mean, this kind of microphone you can buy for 100, 200 euros, and it's a professional mic. It has a very, very good sound, sound to it. But there's also a lot of platforms where you can learn how to use these things, how you can use these uh, devices. Um, and through platforms and social media, you can actually reach your audience. This is what technology offers us today. And it allows us to really become who you want to become. You probably have heard of The Weeknd. The Weeknd is an artist who actually in 2010 made an album in his living room. And what he did was he put out this music on YouTube um, and on, on a very simple landing page, uh, got a couple of um, listens to it, a couple of views, when suddenly Drake pops up and actually liked it, uh, his music. And then suddenly the ball started rolling and probably you know him today as one of the best selling ever artists in the world. He has about three Grammys, I guess. Uh, he sold about 100 million uh, records, and that's in about 10 years. And he all started in his bedroom from these kind of devices. He really wanted to be a singer, while well, technology allowed him to be a singer. And in the same way, um, when we think back to our health, for example, um, everybody now can become a runner. If you want to start running, um, which is basically almost the, the most easiest sport to do, you just put on some running shoes and you just go out and start running. Um, everybody today can become a runner. Um, why was it, is it different today than in the past? Because technology helps us. Technology really allows us um, to persevere in the running because it's hard to continue that running. Um, and thanks to running apps, for example, um, you are motivated, um, you get a personal plan, you get notifications, you can link it to your social network so that you're motivated by them as well. So technology really allows you um, to be, become a runner if you want to. So thanks to technology, we really can become who or what we want to become. The tools are there, they're cheap, we have an audience and we have the means to learn uh, about it. That is the first evolution, the technolo technological evolution. The second evolution has to do with the way that companies uh, create value. Um, it's the economical evolution. And of course, you all, um, know how we went from commodities into products. So the commodities were transformed into products. You know how products now were joined by services. And today we are in an, in an, in an economy that is called the experience economy. Um, customer experience since about six, seven years is the key differentiator if you want um, to win the hearts of your, uh, your, your customer. But these past few years, we've even evolved. If services was a personalization of the products and if experiences was a personalization of the services, 
while we now ha are in the midst of personalizing experiences, which then we call transformations. And transformations are um, an experience that actually transforms a, a person into something else. If he has that experience, he will feel better. He will feel transformed. And Nike is one of the companies I've, I believe that really has understood this very properly. They are no longer um, putting out loyalty programs that actually, you know, um, give you one extra product if you've already bought nine. So not a nine plus one kind of kind of thing. But they actually have built loyalty programs that motivate people to continue sp to do sports to exercise. So if you sport a lot, sport a lot, and you 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 collect those you know activity points etc. in their app, you actually get motivated and you get extra rewards. Talks to experts, uh, specific products um, delivered by Nike themselves. So they really transform their own customers by motiv motivating them that way um, and doing more exercises and doing more um, sports. But they're not the only brand, um, certainly not in health. I believe that Mercedes-Benz, to me, is likely one of the most promising health brands and health companies in the world. Yes, that's an automotive um, um, car brand indeed. And their ambition is to make people healthier, a car brand that is. So if you spend three hours in a car today, you probably feel exhausted and tired a bit after you get out of the car. Their ambition is the three hours time spent in that car should make you more healthier. If you get out of that car after three hour driving, you should feel healthier. And this is really their mission now. They really want to transform their drivers into healthier human beings. Um, and they are, are interacting with different kind of devices, but they also have lots of sensors now uh, in their new cars, trying to really help you become healthier. So people are trying to create value for their customers. And while it was still about experiences six, seven years ago, we have now moved into an era which is more about personal experiences or what we call um, transformations. How can you transform people into becoming um, better and actually offer that experience that afterwards they say, I'm a different person now. This is the um, second evolution. So we get the, the first one is technolog technological evolution. The second one is economical evolution. The third one is related to psychological evolutions. Um, people now really aspire to become the best possible version of themselves. And I'll explain you why this is. This, you, you all know the um, Maslow pyramid, the hierarchy of needs. I kind of simplified it into three layers. The basic layer is um, the functional needs or the basic needs. The second layer is related to the emotional needs and the social needs. And in today's society, what we've come to realize is that our basic needs and our emotional needs are largely fulfilled. So more and more people are moving into the top of their needs which is self-actualization needs or the big desire to become a better person. person. Um, and well, there's many ways to show it, but the one I really like is the way that people um, think about and behave uh, about retirement than, um, than in the past. Like in the past, when you would retire, you would say, look, I did my, 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 my duties, my basic needs are fulfilled. My social needs are fulfilled. Now I'm retired. I'm done working. I will take care of myself now. I will do that hobby that I've always wanted to do. I will make that trip I've always wanted um, to, 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 to make. Um, and everybody was waiting until retirement to actually do that. Now, if you look at the youngsters until 40, 45, 50 even, or even the entire population, more and more people are focusing on themselves earlier in their career. They really want to do that um, trip they've always wanted to do. They want to take a sabbatical. They really want to write a book like I did, or they want to make an album, or they want to really make that hobby into something valuable in their lives. They are no longer waiting until retirement. It's important to do the things that makes you a better person. And we've come to realize that in, in our society, and that's what we more and more um, are doing. And in general, um, uh, because we're talking hobbies and, and travel, etc. But in general, it comes down to three big, big trends today. One is, of course, sustainability. People want to become a better person um, by, by taking into account their planet. Um, the social um, uh, inclusivity, diversity, 
uh, aspect of our society is also very important. They really want to go out there and, and add it and bring an added value to that. And, and finally, it's related to themselves, um, the aspiration to become as healthy and happy as um, possible, which is what I've written in my book, um, Health Enthusiasm, of course. So these are the aspirational trends, sustainability, inclusivity and diversity and health. People want to um, become a better person by also focusing on, on that. And that, what is, that is what trend watching has already um, flagged in 2015 as being the primary driver of consumption behavior. So these three aspects will drive people in deciding who, from who they um, will be um, buying. So that is basically the, um, those are basically the three evolutions that actually made that health has become more dominantly present in our society. We have on the one side, the technological evolution. You can become who or what you want. We've accustomed to that. We really want that to be also valuable for our health. So we want technolo technology to help us in becoming as healthy and happy as possible. And brands and companies are shifting from experiences to transformations. Um, and, and we value that as a customer. We really want um, to make those choices for those brands and, and, and companies that actually give us that personal experience that actually makes us feel better, that actually transforms us. And finally, the psychological evolution, of course, which um, is the desire from each and every one of us to become the best possible version of ourselves, which we see um, more and more. So these are the three main evolutions that actually make people um, want to be healthier and happier. Um, but there's a fourth one, of course. I mean, and if you look around us and if you look into the news and the newspapers and even each and every uh, conversation um, today, there is a fourth one that actually um, has a huge impact on why health has become so predominantly important in our uh, society. And that is, of course, everything related to COVID-19, the corona crisis, um, the health care that we all are having um, today, the health care that makes 4 billion people live at home right now. And that is actually the fourth evolution, which is very strong today, which I call um, the societal evolution. And earlier on, I, I was talking about, you know, the hierarchy of needs where people actually wanted to become the healthiest and happiest version um, of themselves, the aspirational needs that uh, people are having today. Well, because of this crisis, um, we now see that, you know, some people um, lose their jobs and some people are um, afraid of, of, of falling ill, have, uh, catching a disease, catching the virus. Uh, some people are afraid that they might not have enough food. Um, others are not sleeping anymore. So the basic needs for some of us, maybe for lots, lots of people, um, are no longer fulfilled. Neither are often the emotional needs because, uh, we, because we are enclosed in our houses. Um, we, we, we cannot have contact with anybody we want. And so we are now more focused on... Um, um, getting having contact to to digital contacts we're, we're in close in our home either alone or with our own families and we're not really seeing or feeling anybody else um, so the emotional need has become bigger um, again and that is typical for a crisis of course i mean we were living in, an, in a normal situation and then suddenly COVID 19 happened um, and this was the, the huge crisis for a society um, and we probably will move into um, a an, an period of lots of chaos, by which I mean that things will not be normal uh, yet. And typically speaking, I mean, the crisis takes about two, three months and, and the chaos takes about six to 12 months. But in this case, we know that the chaos will probably only begin to end as soon as a vaccine is, is present. So it might take 18 to, to 36 months. And this is an exceptional situation. Um, for 18 to 36 months, we will live in what I call um, FUD times, F-U-D. And FUD stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And through those 18 to 36 months, it will be very hard to determine and to know what the new normal will be. It will be a new normal for a starter that we will create ourselves as a company, as a human. Um, but it's very hard to really define or know how it will um, evolve. However, that does not mean that you need to wait. 
or that you need to wait until the customer himself knows what he wants or what he needs. Because if you look very closely, you'll see that there's already three very dominant needs today. And they're related again to the um, hierarchy of needs, of course. And I'll show you um, what they um, are. First of all, um, and I think that's very, very obvious and you see it all around us, um, but there's a higher awareness related to health. And more than ever, um, people talk about health and, and the precautions that they need to make, about hygiene, about the, the, the risk of spreading a, a virus. Um, and so more than ever, we are afraid of losing our good health. It has become some sort of hygiene factor. And that's why people um, really need to feel safe today. Safeness is one of the most um, dominant needs that we have in today's society and during that period of crisis the next 18 to 36 months and likely even after that um, it will not go away um, as a brand as a company we um, really need to focus on uh, offering that um, safeness and this is what we do I mean a lot of companies are um, switching to um, suing these kind of mouth masks sanitizers you had even um, supermarkets that are putting the sanitizer in the mouth mask or anything related to hygiene already in the basket of a um, con consumer to make to making sure that they don't need to look for it and that they can focus on um, buying the food that they need. Um, and I think I really think every human being is somehow focused for themselves on this safeness as well. A second um, part and a second need that we really um, obviously see around us is the need for togetherness. As I said earlier, many of us are um, trapped in our own house. Um, we are doing time with our families and, and, and we don't see a lot of other people. We don't have the freedom to visit who we want to, to visit. We don't have the freedom to go out and meet people. Um, so there's really a huge need for this togetherness. Also, when you're battling an, a common enemy, in this case, the virus at a global level even, um, you can't do it by yourself. And you see this togetherness um, amongst companies as well. Google and Apple are teaming up together. Deleuze and Corrid in Belgium are teaming up together. Um, many companies are collaborating to actually bring out one or the other solution um, to cope with this pandemic um, today. And also people are helping each other, of course. Um, and beyond that, we even, we even reach out to each other. We call each other. We have daily weekly calls with the friends that we miss the most and certainly this image of you know zoom and 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 house party for example are um, very common in today's world we have a meeting at night with our friends where we drink a wine and chat about today or even wine about um today i would say so this is the second need that is very obvious and very present today which is um togetherness and then a third um, um need that we see is um, still uh, for and has been around for a long time, but has, has really increased a lot, is the will to be as well as possible. So the wellness needs. People want to be as healthy, as uh, happy as ever before. And you can see that um, if, you, if you go out for a walk, um, you probably already noticed how many people are walking uh, these days or how many people are running. Um, in fact, um, if my sources are correct, uh, I heard that the Start to Run app in Belgium alone um, actually had about 450,000 downloads in the first three weeks of the lockdown, which means that people are so much focused on, on being as healthy as possible, uh, to being as well in shape as possible. You see this also in... Um, and, and the way that people behave with their food. About 40% of the population says that they actually eat healthier than before, just because there is this health scare going on and they really uh, want to take care of themselves. And also companies, um, even if you're working from home, companies are helping their employees um, to be as healthy as possible. They give them tips, they give them tools, they give them free um, devices, for example, the NHS has offered um, several um, subscriptions from several um, health and mental health apps to their workers, to their healthcare workers, to really help them um, feel better. So we have basically um, three needs today that are already very obvious, already in this period of 
chaos that we will be in for the next 18 to 36 months. And that is um, safeness, um, togetherness and wellness. And if you look back to the um, pyramids the, or the hierarchy of needs, the pyramid of Maslow, then you can nicely put it put them there. And um, while previously I would say um, most of the people are tending towards becoming a better person, towards this self-actualization need, towards this wellness, while today um, I'm pretty sure this is still even stronger, um, but what we see is a rise in the need for safeness related to good health, health as a hygiene factor, but also togetherness, um, which is health as a mental health um, factor. And to show you how this is really, um, how this has changed a lot, just simply look at the Google trends we see today. Um, this graph shows you how the growth on these specific terms um, and topics have um, growth, grown in the past year. So compared to um, 2019, safety as well as together, as well as wellness have grown 25%. So there's 25% more searches on these three topics today than the year before. And this is what people really need. They need that safeness, they need that togetherness, and they need that um, wellness and this is what health enthusiasm is all about it's the aspiration of people to become as healthy as happy as possible but it's also our um, task our mission as a brand a company a pharmaceutical industry or a healthcare institution to making customers healthy and happy and this is what i would um highly recommend you to do. And if you want to discuss this with me, if you want to have a deeper um, discussion on this, I, I'm taking calls every Wednesday and Friday for free 40 minute calls where I brainstorm about um, this enthusiasm thing and how, how it has become stronger and what it means for your company. Um, I do this every week, two days um, for free, just to help out and um, see where I can be of any help to you. So if you want to get in touch with me, feel free, um, drop an email or contact me via LinkedIn and we can certainly have a chat on health enthusiasm because it's our duty, it's our mission to make our customers healthy and happy and certainly today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you really liked it. Maybe just as a final um, reminder of how should you be doing it again? What are the four evolutions? Well, one is the technological evolution. Let me recap it as such. One is a te technological evolution. And it's really important to know there who or what your customer wants to become. A second one is really more related to what are the personal experiences that would create value to your customer? And do you know them? Do you know how to create for them? Um, a third one is more related to the personal aspirations of people. I mean, it's good to know who your customers are, but it's even better to know who they want to become. And finally, of course, is related to the COVID-19 situation, the next 18 to 36 months. And that is related to how can you offer safeness, togetherness and wellness to your customers. Those four aspects are the way to move forward. And those four, those four aspects um, are very important if you want to um, help your customers who are more than ever focused on health, who are more than ever, ever health enthusiastic. I hope you enjoyed um, this monologue. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.